Well, hello, my fellow American. I see that you cannot afford to drive anywhere anytime soon, so here we are. Three years now, and we're still stuck inside. So I know you need a little bit more distractions in your life. And what if I told you that for less than a single gallon of gasolina, you could be watching a sports product just as good as the NFL playoffs? Oh, and it's going on right now. Yes, you've seen the title. I'm talking about the UEFA Champions League, aka the European version of playoffs. Now, as an American, I know you guys all hate European soccer because they don't have a playoff system. And us as Americans, we're more civilized than they are. We love a good playoff series. And yes, you're cultured. You've heard of the big teams like Barcelona, Bayern Munich, AC Milan. But they all play in different countries with different leagues. That's too confusing for you. You're not gonna watch all of that. But what if I told you we just took all of those best teams, the best teams that you've heard of, and we put them in a World Cup style tournament arc. Oh, and this happens every year. That's what the Champions League is. And it's just as epic as the NFL playoffs or the NBA playoffs. The top leagues from every country in UEFA send their best teams from the previous season into this World Cup style tournament that runs parallel to the regular season. And exactly like the World Cup, they do round robin play to go ahead and eliminate the scrubs. And then depending on the records, they go ahead and put them into a standard playoff bracket. And from that point on, it's two leg series until the finals. That means you play one game at home and one away. Now in the past, there was this confusing rule about away goals counting more in the event of a, a two leg tie. But luckily for you, my fellow dumb American, you don't have to learn any of that shit now because they changed the rule for the first time in 50 years. So from this season on, it's exactly like the World Cup knockout stages. If they're tied after two games, you play two extra 15 minute halves. And if it's still tied after that, you go to a penalty shootout. And come on, what red-blooded American doesn't like a good old fashioned shootout in more ways than one? Now you're a smart American. I assume that you know how the World Cup works by this point. So for this video, I'm just gonna be your guide, your Sherpa, if you will. Give you the spark notes rundown of all the big teams that are still competing, the storylines that are going on right now. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be primed and ready to experience the European version of playoff football. Welcome to a clueless guide to the Champions League. All right, so first off, disclaimer. This video is gonna feature a lot less Champions League footage than you might expect from me, and that's because the Champions League and UEFA are fucking Nazis when it comes to copyright claims. Yeah, I can't even show their commercial. Their commercial! Or even like a FIFA render of their logo, let's say copyright claim this video. Hey assholes, I'm doing your marketing for you. The least you could do is let YouTube pay me. By the way, on an unrelated note, please donate to me on Patreon. Link up in the eye thing is, thank you. But anywho, as per usual, there is a clear and easy team for most Americans to root for in this competition. That of course is Chelsea Football Club because they got the best American in the game, baby. And that's Christian Pulisic. Not Pulisic, he's Pulisic because he's American. And this little guy from Hershey, Pennsylvania has been killing it as of late for club and country, scoring crucial goals to help both Chelsea and the U.S. men's national team advance in their respective competitions. Now, for my uninitiated Americans who have never actually watched Pulisic play, this guy is uber talented, but streaky, all right? And while he's young, I, I think it's fair to say that he's a little bit injury prone, but, but when this motherfucker is fit and dialed in, he is a little monster. Think of him like the Dalvin Cook of European football. You know he's gonna miss a couple of games every year, but when he's in there, he's a fucking beast. And also the other reason why you should probably be rooting for Chelsea is they're the defending champions of this tournament. Yeah, in actuality, they, they weren't really one of the stronger teams last year, but they got hot and that's all you need in the Champions League. They went on a Cinderella run and won it all. And this isn't even the first time they've done it. They did it like six years ago. There's just something about this team that makes magical runs when it comes to the Champions League. Now, there's a little bit of a, of a big elephant in the room here that a lot of Americans aren't gonna like. And that is simply because the owner is Russian and Russians aren't very popular right now. But I will say this, Roman Abramovich, the oligarch who owns Chelsea Football Club, has done the noble thing and, and put the team up for sale. And if reports are to be believed, I mean, who knows these days, so big asterisk here. But if the reports are true, he has become a, a sort of mediator and has had discussions with both Putin and Zelensky trying to broker a peace deal in this conflict. So as far as oligarch owners go, he's probably not even the worst one left in this competition. Like Real Madrid's owner would gladly kick a Ukrainian baby in the face if it meant that he would capture another Champions League title. Let's be honest. 
And you know he would do it. Look at this man. But if you don't even want to think about all this bullshit going on, I don't blame you. And frankly, there are stronger teams that you can bandwagon on. But now, all right, everyone, just, just go ahead and sit down because uh, daddy, daddy's got some bad news, okay? And that is, uh, it's sad to report, but the most exciting team in this tournament is, um, is already knocked out. All right, let's talk about it, okay? PSG, aka Paris Saint-Germain, aka the team with the sick Jordan jerseys, aka the team with Neymar, Mbappe, and Messi, names that you actually have heard of. Um, they've already been eliminated. Messi left his lifelong club at Barcelona to join the stars over in Paris, and that has resulted in them bouncing out of the first round of the Champions League knockout stages. In fact, the two goats of the sport, Messi and Ronaldo, have both been knocked out of round. You might be asking yourself, how? Did a team featuring Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe actually lose? Well, quick history lesson, PSG always lose in this competition. And that's because even though PSG has bought like all the most expensive players in the world, they play in the French League, which is pretty much the equivalent of the G League of European football. Like literally, if you took the Warriors and made them play G League teams, that's PSG in the French League. And I personally believe that's why they always choke in this competition. You can't play your little brother clubs week in and week out and think you're gonna be prepared for when you face a team that will actually punch you back. It's just nature, you know? The Mongols, the greatest conquerors the world has ever seen. They would actually rotate their generals from the city life back to the desolate steppe every couple of months because what they found out and what human nature will show you is that no matter how badass you are, that comfy life, will make you soft. So even though they have more money than God and they have all the big name stars, they don't have the sparring partners to keep the match sharp. It's stars and scrubs in the French League. And that's ultimately what's fucking them over. The wealth inequality in France is fucking up even their soccer league, which is the most French thing I've heard. But sick hits though. I mean like, they're fucking fantastic. I gotta get one if YouTube will actually pay me. Now, the best team out of Germany kinda has the same problem, but, but just not as pronounced. Now that team is called Bayern Munich, and they've been the big bullies of the Bundesliga for generations now. Now like PSG, uh, they have more money than everyone else in the league, and even if some of the rival teams can produce or develop like an actual good player here or there, they just buy them up. They rip them off of the stem, like ripe fruit off of their neighbor's tree. But in the defense, at least they have like a couple of half decent like teams in Germany to keep the match sharp. And they play like what you think a German team would play like. Strong, precise, efficient well coached an exciting war chest of attacking talent spearheaded by the best striker in the world in robert Lewandowski. this man is kind of like the steph curry of europe in that he isn't really the most like physically impressive human being but he does everything so skillfully so gracefully and can score in so many different ways that he has turned himself into one of the most dangerous weapons the sport has ever seen but even they the germans are not as dominant as they have been in the past anytime a team in the bundesliga hasn't just like rolled over and showed them their belly when they actually fight back a little you can see that this team gets a little nervy they get a little nervous the premier league has been the most successful league over the past couple years in the Champions League. And that's because they play in the most competitive league in the world. The English usually have four to six very strong teams in the league. And even the mid table teams and the lower tier teams can now afford high caliber talent because of the revenue sharing from the massive TV contracts they've recently signed. And what this has caused is the whole iron sharpens iron concept. There are no gimmies like in the Bundesliga or in the Spanish league or in the French league. And the proof is in the results because two of the last three years have been a Champions League final where both of the teams were represented by the Premier League. Chelsea won it last year, Liverpool won it three years ago and appeared in the finals the year before that, and Man City made their first final appearance last season, and it seems honestly only a matter of time before they eventually capture their first Champions League trophy. As for my favorite team, and the team that Cristiano Ronaldo plays for Manchester United, they, uh, they have no real excuses. They spent big this summer, they got amazing talent, a new German coach, and they still can't get a dot. Bounce out! of the round of 16 by a team you've probably never heard of. And to top it off, they might not even qualify for Champions League next year. It's it's great. It's great being a Manchester United fan. In fact, if I have one piece of advice to any new American fans, do not become a Man United fan. They are the Dallas Cowboys of Europe. They had their glory days in the 90s, and it's only been flirting with glory ever since. For a deep dive into why Man United suck donkey balls, uh, you can go ahead and click up in the eye thingies, and I'll link you to a video where I break that down, but it's best if we do not waste any more breath on these bums. 
So we're in the round of eight, and of the teams left in this competition, you want to know who should I, a red-blooded American, bandwagon? Now let's go over the scrub teams, or you know, we'll, we'll call them Cinderella teams. But as an American, I know you, all right? As TLC said, you don't want no scrubs. You want winners. You want people who want to win. So I will say, for all my hipsters out there though, that there is a little bit of a dark horse in this competition, and that is Villarreal. They're from the Spanish League, and they just knocked out Juventus, who are the Real Madrid of Italy. And what I like about them is they can defend like a motherfucker, and they are tricky off of their set pieces. If they can take their chances, if this was March Madness, they could be the bracket buster of this competition. So, for all my soccer hipsters, this is the pick for you. But for most Americans, I mean, you know, Benfica is a, a legendary Portugal club, but they're probably not gonna win this. Atletico Madrid actually made the finals not too long ago, but once again, no one really cares. And if one of these Cinderella teams actually does make it into the finals, just go on Wikipedia and pretend like you actually did know about them. But for most Americans, I know you. You wanna choose one of the big boys. So first up, let's talk about Real Madrid. Now the reason you aren't gonna be able to watch the likes of Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, all the names that you actually have heard of, is because Real Madrid knocked them out in the round of 16. Now, you probably heard of Real Madrid, but this isn't the Real Madrid of your father's time, or even your uncle's time. Their nickname is the Galacticos. They were like the Yankees of old. They just had more money than everyone, so they would just buy up all the best players. But that has kind of recently changed over the past five years. Ever since they sold Ronaldo, they've kind of bet their future on the kids. They're still dishing out insane amounts of money, but instead of overpaying for established world-class superstars, they're now still overpaying for slightly less for the best under-21 talent coming out of South America. They're basically trying to do what Barcelona did with Messi and Neymar. But that gamble hasn't really paid off yet. Like, the kids have shown some flashes here and there, but to say that the, the next Neymar is, is quite a stretch. And the superstars that are left on the team are, yeah, they're a little bit past their prime. But when the team needed the most in the Champions League, up against PSG, these aging stars who have the season experience of being in these big moments were able to dig themselves out of a 2-0 hole and storm all the way back to beat a team led by Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. Karim Benzema, a player Real Madrid has been trying to upgrade over for the past decade now, scored a hat trick to knock out the most expensive attacking trio in the world. Now, as inspirational as this is, I, I don't want to make it out to be like, oh, this is such a, a huge underdog story because they're, they're both the big spenders of their respective leagues. It's just the Paris billionaires are, are a bit more rich than the Madrid billionaires right now. But once again, this is why you watch the Champions League instead of their domestic leagues. So you get to see all the bullies come out and actually fight other bullies. Just kaiju battling kaiju. Godzilla King of Monster style. No filler, all steak. And it's lovely. And then there's Liverpool. And Liverpool is, is probably the easiest choice for most Americans if you're not going to root for Chelsea. They're owned by Americans, and LeBron has a part stake in the team. They have an amazing 11 that play beautiful attacking football, and their attackers create the spectacular on the regular. And their coach is somehow more likable and lovable than everything I just mentioned. The only reason not to become a fan of Liverpool at this point is that they're just a bit overplayed at the moment. Like, it's, it's almost too easy of a choice. You get what I'm saying? They're like the white fans of European sports team. There's no real reason to dislike them, and, and no one's gonna give you shit for repping them, but deep down inside, when you wear them, you'll feel a bit basic. And that's what it's like becoming a Liverpool fan in 2022. And if you're okay with that, then this is the team for you. And you're not gonna be disappointed, they're fantastic. And then we have Manchester City. Now these guys are the Golden State Warriors of British football. If the Warriors, when they got KD, also got LeBron, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Luka Doncic. That's how much talent this team has hoarded over the past decade. And much like the Warriors, they were a footnote in sports history till new billionaire owners came along and weaponized them into a global footballing force. But credit, where credit is due, their Citigroup teams have been topping the tables in multiple corners of the globe this year. And there are plenty of new billionaire owners who buy up teams every single season, but few have had as rapid and prolonged success as City. Five domestic titles since they took over, more than any other team in that time. And as a Manchester United fan, I can freely admit they have all but overtaken us as the most dominant team in England. But the one 
final jewel that has eluded them in their quest for world domination has been the UEFA Champions League trophy. For whatever reason, it is the last piece of silverware that has avoided their orbit. Now, they basically are the Yankees or the Galacticos of Britain. They have bought talent three times over. Their B team could probably beat the majority of teams in this tournament. And they hire the coach who used to coach Messi, and many even argue is the greatest coach of all time. And domestically, they've been doing fantastic. They're pretty much walking their way to another Premier League title this year without even playing with a true striker. That's like the only weakness of this team. And uh, apparently that's going to be solved because the rumors now is they're going to sign the best young striker in the world not named Mbappe. This kid named Erlen Holland is a fucking freight train. (laughs) If they are able to grab him, they're going to be pretty much unstoppable. It is inevitable that they will eventually win this competition. So if you have low self-esteem and you just need something in your life to make you feel like a winner, root for Man City, bro. Fuck it. After these last three godforsaken fucking years, if you need something positive in your life, just go and root for Man City, brother. So yeah, that's pretty much who you should be bandwagoning, but now you probably want to know, how do I even watch this competition? All right, so the important date you need to know is that the round of eight goes ahead and kicks off on April 5th. And for people in America, you have two, well, well, technically three options on how to watch this competition. If you want to watch it live, you can go ahead and pay $5 a month for Paramount Plus, which also gives you access to the new Halo series that everyone says is just okay. It's just okay at best. But hey, still cheaper than a single gallon of gas. And if you're a student, you can qualify for 25% off. You broke fuck. Also, if there are any students out there who want to lend me their email, I mean, I'll say 25% off $5. I was just joking. I'm Asian. I love a good deal. But I want to give you fair warning that uh, because this is in Europe, the time to watch it live is a little bit awkward. It always happens on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. in the afternoon for the East Coast folks and 12 noon for my West Coast viewers. But what is nice about it, if you can take a lunch break, you can go to a sports bar and watch it. Or if you want to save even more money and time, you can just watch the highlights on YouTube. It's obviously not as good as watching it live, but it cuts out a lot of the bullshits that Americans hate. And honestly, in fact, you should go right now and rewatch the insane two legs between Real Madrid and PSG. Just go T12 noon West Coast. So yeah, for all my lazy Americans, nice, low commitment. Just like my dating life, if it even existed. But that is pretty much all the info you need to get to start watching the Champions League this year. Now, I know I might have disappointed some of my Italian-American friends here, because I didn't mention any of the teams from Italy, but that's not my fault. It's, it's just for whatever reason, the Italian team sucked dick this year in this competition. My condolences. I know you guys just got bounced from the World Cup as well, but hey, Y'all won the Euros this past summer, so, you know, can't win them all. Anyway, that is going to be it from me, Be Modest. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead, smash the like. Please, please, God, smash the like. It's the only thing keeping me alive with this godforsaken algorithm. Uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks to give you a guide to the NBA playoffs, which is kicking off in April as well. I'd like to go ahead and thank all of my patronos keeping me alive during this global bullshit. Pray for my peoples in Ukraine. Pray for even the Russians who are dying in Ukraine. I just want all that shit over. Also, still looking for editors, specifically an American editor. Follow me at BeModest over on the Instagrams. Go ahead and sauce me a little DM. Or just follow me to, to, to check out what I, what I cook late at night because I'm fat. But anywho, until next time, America. Kaboom!